Hey everyone! So a couple of weeks ago I started a new project to build a water cool gaming PC. Unfortunately I still don't have all the parts yet though so I apologise for the slow progress on this one. This video is going to focus on the water blocks and I'm going to start it by getting a water block installed on my GPU. But before that let's remove this activate windows 10 watermark thanks to this video sponsor SCD key. If you use the link in the description down below and you enter the discount code TPC at checkout, you'll save yourself an additional 15% off an OEM Windows 10 key. The key is delivered immediately and then you can just search for activate on your PC and input the code there and the watermark is gone. Now back to the video. I've decided that out of the two 2080 Ti's that I have to choose between for this build, it's going to be the MSI Duke 2080 Ti that's getting wet. The original plan was to water cool the Founders Edition card, but I did a build recently in a video in a 220T and the MSI Duke was slightly too big to fit in the case, so the plan so instead the plan changed and I put the Founders Edition in there and I'm water cooling the MSI Duke. So the first thing to do would be to remove the stock air cooler from this card. I think that the last GPU I dismantled was a GTX 980 Ti, so it has been a little while. Fun fact. Even though I've done builds with GPUs as part of their loops before, I've never actually ran these systems for any real length of time, so this will actually be my first ever CPU and GPU watercool PC that I'll actually deploy and use, which means that I can hopefully create future content on things like loop maintenance and cover any long term problems that I might face. I am also planning on making upgrades to loop over time. For example, this initial build is just going to use flexible tubing and then once the CPU and motherboard have been upgraded, I plan to switch over to hardline tubing. That way I can make a comparison between the two tubing methods. I really hate that there's this perception that hardline tubing is always better. I mean like, yeah, sure it's harder to install, but something being more difficult doesn't necessarily make it better. Like, depending on the style and theme of the build, sometimes flexible tubing will just suit it more. Plus it is way more practical, especially if, like me, you plan to swap out hardware a lot. So yeah, it should be a pretty interesting comparison. I predict that in this build, I'll much prefer the look of Hardline, but I probably will stick to flexible tubing long term, but we'll see. <laughs> the other thing I'd like to try is a motherboard monoblock at some point, as I've always wanted to give one of those a go. So this card is an X-Review sample and has done the rounds a little bit, which is why the file paste is a little more messy than what you'd expect to see if this was the first time this GPU had been taken apart. There is something quite satisfying about removing file pads. This MSI Duke seems really well designed, or at least nothing like sticks out to me as being wrong. But then again it is a 2080i and you can't really make cooler mistakes at this price point and get away with it. It always seems a shame to have a nice GPU air cooler just going to waste when you water cool. I wish there was a way to buy a GPU without a cooler included with it at all. I also wish that water cooling was more viable at lower price points. Like at the moment you'd be silly to water cool anything below a 2080 because you might as well have spent that cooling money on a higher end GPU and made your PC more powerful instead. Now that it's all taken apart I can take the time to appreciate a 2080 Ti completely exposed. I must say the GPU die is even larger than I was expecting it to be. It's massive. I actually posted this to Twitter and asked people to respond with their naked hardware pictures. So if you have anything you'd like to share, I'd love to see it and I'll put a link to the Twitter post in the description down below. So the block that I'm going to be installing is this Corsair Hydro X series XG7 RGB water block. It comes with some nice features compared to the blocks that I've used in the past. For example, it includes a backplate, so you don't have to buy one separately. It also has pre-installed thermal pads and thermal paste, which streamlines installation quite a bit. There are a couple of issues though, the first being something that was heavily commented on in my previous video. There's a design flaw in how the terminal section, the bit where your fittings go, with how that bit connects to the main block. In a nutshell, there's two screws and an o-ring there, and if you put any tension on that join, you create a small gap that could result in a leak. This can be seen in a Linus Tech Tips video where he pulls on a tube that's too short for the run and the block drips. And there's also a great video out there on a channel called Major Hardware, which goes into much more detail. And I'll link both of these videos in the description down below. I have to say that this isn't a huge deal breaker for me. I mean, with most hardline fittings out there, you can actually just pull the tube out of the fitting without having to untighten anything. 
So I feel like with any water cooling, as long as you're aware what the limitations are for the water cooling hardware that you're using, then you can take steps to mitigate any risks. So I now know that with this block, I need to run my tubes in a way that puts little to no tension on that part of the GPU. And if I manage to do that, then I'm confident that it won't leak. With that said though, if I was spending £150 on a GPU block, this would be a factor that goes against choosing this one and towards picking a different block. If, like me though, you are hoping to go for complete Hydro X and IQ setup, then picking a different block does have its drawbacks, but for different reasons. Hopefully, this is an issue that Corsair will improve on over future generations. I mean, this is their first attempt at a water cooling range after all. The other issue is with the backplate. I couldn't help but notice that the stock MSI backplate had thermal pads to help heat transfer from the back of the PCB and into the backplate. And this has been shown in tests to make no difference to temps versus just not having a backplate at all. However, it seems that if you have a backplate with no heat pads, then you are potentially trapping heat between the PCB and the backplate. With that said though, I'm sure this is way less important when you're water cooling versus when you're air cooling, as everything is going to be running considerably colder anyway. But yeah, this is a 2080 Ti with the XG7 RGB water block installed, and I think that it looks really nice. So something else that has arrived is the Hydro X series XC7 RGB CPU water block. This is Corsair's mainstream platform smaller water block, so it fits AM4 and 1150X sockets. And I've gone for the white version, which is a relatively new addition to their lineup. I wanted to talk to you all about CPUs, because right now the build has a first gen Ryzen 7 1700, and that's on an Aorus X470 Gaming 7 motherboard. And this obviously doesn't match the rest of the system, and I need a new CPU. I've already done two third gen Ryzen builds, so I feel like that isn't an option. And ninth generation Intel is too far into its lifespan to be worth investing in to make videos on. Now, if rumours are to be believed, Intel's 10th generation Comet Lake S is right around the corner, and the i9-10900K is bound to take the game performance crown from the 9900K, and could be a great choice for this build, given that it is purely a gaming system. However, AMD's Ryzen 4000 is expected by the end of the year, and Intel's Rocket Lake S is expected to follow shortly after to try to compete. So to summarise, do you think that I should buy a 10900K at launch, price permitting of course, or should I wait and stick with the temporary Ryzen 1700 until later on in the year? Please let me know what you think I should do in the comments down below. Unfortunately, the backplate that the water block comes with doesn't fit with the motherboard's backplate. <laughs> I just love it when this happens. Personally, I can't blame Aorus for this because they designed this board for AMD coolers and AMD coolers should use the pre-installed metal backplate that AM4 boards come with. It's only when a CPU cooler manufacturer makes you replace that backplate with their own one that's designed for both Intel and AMD that you run into these sorts of issues. Personally, I think that all motherboard sockets should include a cooler backplate and cooler manufacturers should have to use it unless they have a very good reason not to. Originally, I was just going to dremel down the cooler backplate, but then thankfully I remembered that I might actually be switching to Intel soon, so we'll need these mounting holes. I feel like I might have gotten a little dremel happy recently. <laughs> In the end, I just removed the motherboard's backplate and then installed the cooler without any problems. The RGB lighting cable comes out of the bottom of the block, which could look a little messy, so I managed it round the outer edge of the block as I installed it. I think this looks really clean, although I do worry that it might create a bit of a shadow side in the RGB lighting, so this might be something that I have to go back and change. But overall I think that this turned out really nice and the block added some much needed white to the build. So I've now sat the GPU in the build to see what it looks like, and whilst from this angle it looks fine, from every other angle it looks pretty silly. It's just too far away from the motherboard, there's this huge empty space between the card and the board that looks silly, and you'll definitely see the motherboard's orange accents with it here. I don't like it, so I'm going to do exactly the same thing that I did with the build in my last video. I'm going to install one of these mounts in the case, which means getting the Dremel out to do so. So I'm wearing iron face protection, and I'm actually going to take away a bit more of these bars than I did last time. You can't actually entirely remove them, because the mount needs two of them intact enough to be able to secure to, and then because I like them all to match, the rest stay as well. I really enjoy doing these little case mods, and I really hope to build up my available tools and skills so that I can take on more ambitious mods. 
But now that I have been able to integrate video sponsors again, I can hopefully pay the boring bills with that and then use the Patreon money for more fun projects. So I've been seeing a lot about stimulus checks from you guys over in America. In the UK, I think I might be eligible for some sort of self-employment grant, but it's going to be based on your last three years of earning, and I struggled a lot during those years. I think for one of them, I only earn around £2,000 for the entire year, so I don't imagine that if I am eligible, that it will be a lot of money. But if I am, I'll try to do something cool with it for the channel. But let me know how things are going where you are. So I've now reinstalled everything, and I also took the opportunity to install the power supply and its individually sleeved cables. The build is using a Corsair HX1000 power supply, and the cables are Corsair as well. I want with black and white to fit the theme. I've also installed some additional cable combs. I've probably used more of them than you're supposed to, but I actually really like how it looks. So this is where I'm at now with this build. I think it's coming along nicely, and I definitely prefer the GPU in its new location. But the case still needs some extra work before I can move on. I've been thinking that it might be time to get out the old final cutter, as there's a few areas that I'd like to add some extra touches. Like the front glass could have some sort of orchid art on it. But I'd also like to do something with this power supply cover. The grill needs covering, but I'm thinking maybe I could also add the name orchid like, written on the side. I've also been looking at this GPU and thinking that a few white lines in between the fins would really match the power supply cables and bring everything together. Then over here, I don't like how messy this part looks, so I'm thinking of cutting a white acrylic sheet and making my own floor piece to stick over the top. Then with this section over here, behind where the front radiator will go, I think that this could use a piece of acrylic as well. So that's where I pick up in the next video, and then it's finally on to the actual water cooling loop, which I cannot wait for because it's been so many years since I last water cooled. So yeah, I hope you like this video, if you do please hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and you want to see more of my videos. Thank you so, so much to my incredible Patreons. And thank you all for watching and stay safe.